Hello everybody, this is Tim. We're here in the PRV Audio Showroom and I'm going to be explaining the features of the PRV Audio DSP 2.8X. This is a digital signal processor. It is a crossover and so much more. We always recommend using this processor in any type of system, whether it's very small or very large. First, we're gonna show you the buttons. Here's the main control. The main control has two functions. It's a quick press to enter inside a menu and then a long press to exit the menu. That is for the button. Now it also turns, so when you're inside the menu, you can change to the next menu selection. You just continue to hold it to go back to the main screen. These here are hotkeys. These are for the outputs. They have two functions. Uh, quick press, it will go into the audio processing. So you can see output one, two, three, four, and so on. Anytime you're inside of a menu, you don't need to scroll to choose the output, you just press the button. When the buttons are blue, the output is activated, it's on, it's sending signal out. When you hold the button, it will turn red and it will cut the signal to that output. Up at the top, we have a remote out sequencer. This will turn your amplifiers on in sequence, starting with one, then two, and three. There is a timer. You can set the interval so that they can either come on automatically, all three at the same time, or you have a, a time between them for a few seconds, up to four seconds. When you turn on the DSP, the DSP will turn on first, then the sequencer will turn on one, two, three, when you turn off the DSP, it will remain on, then the amps will turn off three, two, one. This is a very good feature to have a strong remote on for your amplifiers and also prevents signal pop. If you've ever turned on your, you know, your amplifier and then turn on your radio, you get a loud pop from your speakers. This will prevent that from happening by making sure that the amplifiers turn on and off in the proper sequence. On this side here, we have the remote in which will obviously turn on the DSP, just like an amplifier has a remote. So this can come from your radio's remote output or from a switch, however you wanna turn this on. And then we have ground and battery plus. Battery plus will come from a 12 volt source like your battery. Here we have the main LCD display, the encoder, which is the rotary knob to help control everything. The hotkeys again, on below the hotkeys we have the limiter. When you have the limiter function activated, these will flash as the limiter is activated. These will also flash if the output is saturated, especially if you're using Brazilian amplifiers. They don't like to have such a low gain on them. They wanna have the gain a little higher so that they can accept more of the signal that's coming out of the DSP. So if you see any of these flashing, it's because you have your output saturated. Down at the bottom, we have the inputs. A and B. This is can be used in the routing feature, which I'll explain later. Um, so you have a left and a right input from your radio. With the DSP, you only need one pair of RCAs coming in from the radio. Then one through eight on the outputs, you can do one and two as a left and right. So you can have you know stereo sound, which is also used in the routing feature, or you can put up to eight mono amplifiers on here. And more if you split the signal. From the main menu, we're gonna click in one time. This will bring you to audio processing. This is where most of the magic happens. So we're gonna go into audio processing. The first menu we come to is the graphic EQ. The graphic EQ it has 15 different bands. So here you click in, you can turn the rotary knob and you can choose which frequency you want to cut or boost. Again, you just click to go to the different options, change the frequency, and hold it to go back. The next one is the input parametric EQ. This one allows you to uh, attenuate specific frequency as well as the bandwidth of the frequency. This is how, how much it's going to affect the neighboring frequencies. So you can go 
it will be very tight to that thousand hertz or whatever frequency you choose or it will spread out among some other frequencies that are close by. This will affect the entire system all right, on the input parametric EQ. On the output parametric EQ, it is the same idea. You have the frequency and you can cut or boost that one frequency as well as the attenuation for each individual output. Right now we're on output three. So for each one, so let's say you have a, a mid-range that has a, a very high spike in the, in the frequency response and you want to kind of cut that down to avoid it pulling too much power and possibly burning the voice coil. So you can cut it down a few dBs on that one speaker that goes to your mids amp, all right? The routing feature, this is where the inputs A and B come into play. By default, every output is selected to A plus B which will take both the left and right signal and merge them into a mono signal. So if we click into routing, again, you can use the hotkeys, right? So output one, two, three, four, etc. You can say, okay, I want output one to be my left. So you'll go ahead and choose A to output one. And then two, I want to be my right. So you'll choose the, that one to B. So now you have A going to one, and B going to 2. That will allow you to have a stereo signal. If you just want a mono signal, you leave it A and B. So it will have both going into the one output. This is a very useful feature. This can also be used to connect equalizers to your DSP. Next we have one of the most important features of the DSP, the crossover. Inside the crossover menu, you can choose the output by pressing the hotkey. High pass filter, this will block low frequencies. On all of our products, we have a recommended high pass filter for a mid range or even a mid bass, depending and depending on the power, you wanna put around 100, 125. Some of our mid ranges even go up to you know 160. We always recommend for the recommended power, BT12, depending on your tuning, your listening style, how much power you're running, what products you're running, you may want to change the filter. Okay, so we have 12, 18, 24, 36, and 48 dBs. Then we also have the, you have the BT and the LR. This is all going to depend on how you tune your system, which one you're going to use. So you can tune output one for your tweeters, output two for your mid-range, output three for your mid-bass, four for your subwoofers, you know, if you have compression drivers, phenolic, titanium, the combinations are, are pretty much endless on what you can do here with these outputs. So each one you can tune to each individual amplifier that you have powering those particular speakers that you're tuning for. The delay. The delay feature is mostly used in a inside the car environment. For example, you're sitting in the driver's seat and you want to have a better listening experience. The speakers on the driver's side of the car are going to hit your ear much faster than the ones on the passenger side. So you can use this feature to delay the speakers on the driver's side so that the sound hits you at the same time. This can also be used in a stunt wall application. Uh, you know, you'll have a, a compression driver that may be deeper than the speaker. The tweeter is more shallow than the speaker. So you will delay the products that are further away from the back of the box. So the tweeter will be delayed, then the mid-range will be delayed to the compression driver. I will make another video explaining this in a lot more detail because it is a little bit complicated and I need to show more of how you measure and all that stuff. So we'll leave that for another video. Next we have the phase, it's very simple. Uh, either you're playing the phase normal or you're doing it 180 degrees out. Here we have the limiter. I'm going to touch briefly on the limiter because it is a little bit more complicated. Basically, um, you can set the limiter on any of these outputs so that when it detects distortion, it will cut back that output as many dBs as you set it to. Now, I recommend you don't use the attack or release. You just put it on automatic. And then you can set the dBs. So what you'll do is 
when you have, for example, you're setting this for your mid bass, you have your amplifier up, you have your radio at full volume and it's clipping like crazy. You'll come in here and you start to turn this down. And you'll notice the amplifier, will, will this will start click, kicking in. It will start flashing the limiter. And you'll notice your amp will stop clipping. This will prevent your amp from clipping, prevent you from damaging your speakers. This is a very powerful tool, but you really need to play with it to get a feel for how it really works. I'll make another video on this limiter and showing it in action. Next we have the gain. This is the second most common used feature besides the crossover. What I like to do is I will set my radio to the volume I play at, whether it's 20 or 30 or whatever the radio should play at, the maximum volume without distorting. I will then set the gains on my amps. On a Brazilian amplifier, you can set it however you like it, um, but I will come in and I will turn off these outputs while I'm setting the gains on the DSP. So we'll turn these off. Now nothing's playing, okay? We have the radio at full volume, we have the gain set on the amplifiers. Now, hopefully you're using our Brazilian amplifiers that have clip lights. So you have the mid bass on. I will turn this down negative so that nothing plays and we'll turn on my mid bass speakers. Now I'll start to turn this up. You're going to start to hear music playing through the speakers. The mid bass is going to start hitting. It's going to get louder. You're going to reach a point where it's going to start to distort and the clip light is going to start to flash on your amplifier. Bring this up until you start to see a clip and then you can bring it down until it doesn't clip anymore. A clip every now and then with the mid bass is okay. If you don't want to see that, you want to really protect your system, go down one more until it's not clipping anymore. Then your gain is set. You can do that for your mid-range, mid-bass. I don't recommend running compression drivers or tweeters into clipping on the amplifier. I always set my low frequencies first. I'll set a subwoofer, mid-bass, or mid-range. Then I'll come back and I'll, I'll turn up my drivers just to blend in with the mid-bass. And then I'll turn up my tweeters, I'll turn them down, then I'll turn it on, and then I'll turn up the tweeters just to blend in with my mid bass or mid range compression drivers and then the tweeters on the high end. I do not recommend running them into clipping. You could very well burn them. This will mute your channels, but you really don't even need to go in here to mute the channel. To mute it, you just turn it off. You just hold the button and we'll turn it off. Now, if you're going to use the graphic EQ, you can have it for every output or you can say, okay, I don't want the graphic EQ on on this certain output. I want it off. So you can do that inside here. That is the end of the menus in the audio processing. So we'll go back now and we'll go to the next menu in the main menu. That is the graphic EQ presets. Inside we have flat, loudness, bass boost, mid bass, treble boost, powerful, electronic, rock, hip hop, pop, vocal, and pancadon. With a very powerful system that's well tuned, I do not recommend using these. I recommend leaving it on flat. For a very small system that's maybe not so powerful, you're not running crazy power, um, you can use some of these other ones. But like I said, I recommend just keeping it flat if you're using high power and uh, you have a large system. There are crossover presets, which can help you if you're trying to get a baseline uh, tuned to, to work with. So it's preset to the custom, whatever you have set in there. We have subwoofer one, subwoofer two, Subwoofer 3, woofer 1, woofer 2, woofer 3, driver 1, driver 2, driver 3. Now, they'll be for titanium, phenolic. You'll still have to look at our recommended high-pass filters to get an idea which one you should go with. And then we have tweeter as well. You can save profiles and load them. Not a lot of people use it, but if you want to have a profile for... Uh, a clean sound. If you want to have a profile for a battle, you can you can very well do that. You can save and load. Now we also have uh, the copy feature. If you're setting up one and two to power the same speakers, 
you already have number one tuned. You already have the frequencies you want inside there on the crossover. You already have the gain set. So you're going to choose the source by pressing the hotkey, source one, destination two. Click the main button. Do you want a copy channel? Yes. So now you don't have to go through all the same stuff you went through here. On the next one, you can copy it right over. It's a very useful feature, save some time. Next, we have security. This will allow you to lock your DSP. This is good for installers that have customers that may want to play with the settings and then have a tendency to burn their speakers after. Or if you really just don't want anyone inside your DSP to see your secret tuning setup. Um, so you can change the password. The, the preset password is inside the manual. Here inside tools, we have some very useful features. The first one is the tone generator. This can be used for many things, breaking in subwoofers, running test tones, whatever you want to do with this. So you can set the frequency from 10 to 22,000 hertz. Then you can also set the gain. Now this is very powerful, so you don't want to put this too high. You always want to start low and then you can work your way up. But that's pretty much what the tone generator does. Next we have frequency sweep. This can allow you to hear your system. So you can start at 10 hertz, or you can start at wherever you want, and then end wherever you want. This will sweep from the low end to the high end. You can set the gain and also the speed, how fast it will sweep. This will give you an idea of what you're missing in your system. Are you missing something on the mid-range, on the mid-bass, on the high frequencies? You can actually hear all the frequencies play you will hear when it starts to cut down and it will actually show you here the frequency. So we can give you an idea. We'll set this to fast. And as it's on, you can hear it. You'll hear it go through. Pink noise uh, allows you to generate a signal that maintains the same magnitude for your entire frequency range and you can use it for more advanced tuning. That is it for the tools. So again, we have the tone generator, the frequency sweep, and the pink noise. The next option is a screensaver. It's defaulted to PRV DSP 2.8x, but you can change this to say whatever you want. And when you set it, it will scroll across the screen. You can put your shop name, you can put your car name, your name, whatever you want to put on there, and it will scroll whenever you set it to the screensaver. We also have a language selection. The default languages are English, Portuguese, and Spanish. The last menu is the sequencer that we talked about in the beginning of the video. Like I said, we have time and on and off. So the time is basically how much seconds between them turning on and off. So we're gonna set it down low so you can kind of see it work. So we'll set it for 1.5 seconds, all right? Now you can also individually, we're gonna have to go back and go to on and off. You can individually turn them on and off. So for example, if you, you do wanna play, you have a, a, an amp for your mids, an amp for your drivers, an amp for your tweeters, you wanna turn off you know, the mids or, or something else for some reason, you can do that. You can turn them on and off individually right here in the menu. I'm gonna turn off my radio so that you can see how the sequencer will turn off the amplifiers. You will see that the sequencer will shut down in the sequence, the DSP will still remain on, and then it will also shut off. When you turn on the radio, the DSP will turn on and then it will turn on your amplifiers in sequence. Starting with one, two, and three. That pretty much highlights everything that the DSP has to offer. If you have any other questions, if you want something explained in detail, please let us know down in the comments. And make sure you subscribe to see our future videos on other products from PRV Audio. Thank you.